Villa Romana del Casale, five kilometers from the town of Piazza Armerina in the dead center of Sicily. This villa is one of the seven wonders of Roman archaeology, but above all is a, a testimony of the lavish, elegant way of life of the Romans at the height of the Roman Empire. But there is another thing which strikes you about this villa and it is its location in a green area in an otherwise arid island and that makes you think that the Romans knew exactly where to build their elegant and lavish villas. The size of the villa, the villa is the largest Villa Romana del Casale in the Mediterranean area after the magnificent uh, Villa Adriana near Rome in the town of Tivoli. And about the different hypotheses that we have about the villa's owner, uh, um, the owner, the name of the owner is unknown. Even if the archaeologists, the Gino di Nietzsche or Gentili, think that the villa's owner was Maximianus Herculeus, the member of the Tetrarchy, the group of four emperors that governed the Roman Empire between the 3rd and 4th century AD under Diocletian, we have the name of Proculus Populonius, a very important member of the Roman aristocracy, um, but above all an animal trader. In fact, we will find inside the villa a lot of scenes of hunting game held in the surroundings of the villa, but also in the African and Asian provinces of the Roman Empire. The Villa del Casale was made by four different sections. Here, uh, the main entrance and uh, the spas, the thermal complex made by uh, the, the Calidaria, the running hot water area, the Prefurnia, the oven used for the heating and warming of the air that circulated inside pottery pipes and lamp pipes, the lukewarm water area, the ointment in room whose mosaic show massages made by servants who using perfumes, oils and necessities for the bathing. The people entering the villa found this horseshoe shaped courtyard surrounded by columns with the capital in Ionic style and the main entrance of the villa was made like a triumphal arch having on the top a water reservoir which supplied four fountains, four basins, two inside and half circular shape and two in rectangular shape outside. Then in the middle of the villa we have the peristyle, a huge cartier giving light and air to the guest rooms and in the middle of this cartier we have the, a huge fountain that increases the freshness of the air and the uh, garden. Then on the eastern side we have the apartment reserved for the villa owner and this family and finally, we have the dining room, the so-called triclinium, and like a luxury entrance, we have a, a huge courtyard, the so-called existus, in uh, an elliptical porch with mosaics showing animals surrounded by acanthus leaves. Visit inside the Villa del Casale from the existus, a huge elliptical porch uh, that was originally covered under a wooden roof. In the middle we have four holes of the fountains that increases the freshness of the air and the remains of a colored zigzag decoration. Originally this courtyard was covered with traces of mosaics um, showing animals surrounded by acanthus leaves. The acanthus is the, um, the leaves that you can see in this kind of capital. Here we have uh, one of the uh, items brought to light during the um, excavation. In front of us we have two rooms linked to, uh, to the dining room showing the cultivation, the picking and the pressing of the grapes made by joyful cupids. While in the 
The room to the right we have in the middle a circular frame showing the head of Dionysus Bacchus, god um, of the harvest. Um, inside that room there are also the remains of the frescoes, uh, to, very similar to the examples that you can see inside the towns of Pompeii and the Colano. Here we are inside the triclinium, large dining room, one of the first rooms brought to light in 1929 by the archaeologist Paolo Rossi. Here in the middle we have the 12 labors of Hercules, a very complicated mosaics showing the 12 challenges made by the seal, and we have also three deep apses showing other things linked to the Greek Roman mythology. Here to my left we have a blessing giving us a better idea about this enormous villa. At this moment the villa is subject to works of restoration. This work started in uh, October 2007 and this, mosaic, uh, this restoration are involving the cleaning and the restoration of the mosaics while the plexiglass roof that was installed between 1957 uh, until 1963 under the uh, design made by the architect Franco Minisi will be changed with another structure made in wooden and uh, copper oxidated element more fresher because at this moment uh, this covering is causing a greenhouse effect on the mosaics. In fact, sometimes during the summer season uh, there are temperatures uh, that can reach the 45-53 Celsius degrees inside. The first stops belonging to the triclinium we see the scene with Lycurgus and Ambrosia. Lycurgus, the character in the middle, is fighting against the three girls and the leopard. They are member of a holy cortege in honor of Bacchus, god of the harvest, and they want to stop this cortege using the axis on the left arm. Meanwhile, to the right, we have Ambrosia. She started her metamorphosis becoming a grapes plant, and she started to involve the men with her branches, while at the base of these apps we have five little cupids involved in the grape harvest. Um, let me show you these graphical signs in the middle of each frog. The signs were probably the five signatures belonging to the five school of artists coming from Tunisia and Libya that contributed to the building of this masterpiece. You have to imagine the villa, the mosaics, like a sort of huge puzzle made with almost 120 million of tiles, having the size of nails, and these mosaics were made with 33 different kinds of colors, marbles arriving primarily from Northern Africa and Middle East, and four kinds of colored glasses. In the second apse we have the giant's battle. This giant, this magnificent scene that was recently restored, were hit by the deadly arrows thrown by Hercules, who is fighting against the, the twelve labors, is making the twelve labors to your left. Um, here, in this apse on the pedestal, you can see a little marble bust showing a young Hercules. And at the lower level of the background walls, you can see also remains of the original marble decoration, because the rooms were decorated not only with, fres uh, with frescoes, but also with precious marbles arriving primarily from Northern Africa and Middle East. We're still inside the uh, dining room, the triclinium, and in the last apse you can see the glorification of Hercules. Hercules is the winner, and uh, on his shoulder you can see the skin of a lion, one of the twelve labors, and he was crowned by the laurel crown, and he was surrounded by other gods standing all around. Entering the apartment reserved for the guests, here we are in front of the office room. This was a summer dining room reserved for the family. And the mosaic show in the, in the middle, Orpheus as he charms the wild beast of the forest with the incantivating melody playing the lyre. It was surrounded by 50 kinds of animals and you can see the eyes of the animals stopped in a sort of hypnosis. They were completely bewitched by that melodious song. In the apse on the pedestal, we have a Roman marble copy of Apollo's 
god of poetry and music, and the base of a fountain that increases the freshness of the air. One of the masterpieces kept inside the Villa Romana del Casale is the magnificent Great Aunt Corridor, a wonderful marble carpet, 60 meters long, 3 meters in wide, showing scenes of hunting like a sort of huge safari in the Asia in front of us and in the African provinces of the Roman Empire. This mosaic shows us the various phases of hunting, from the pursuit to the captures of the animals. The animals captured were transported in cages on chart drawn by oxen to the saving ships. And then the animals were transported to Rome and used for the performances held in the, in the Circus Maximus and Colosseum. To the right, we have the personification of India, like a young girl, a naked girl with a brown skin, surrounded by an elephant, a tiger, and on the top of the phoenix that rise again from its ashes. In this mm, corridor, each animal is a sort of identity card of the Roman provinces when the villa was built. And more to the left, we have a portrait of a man with a brown skin shaved, surrounded by two soldiers with two huge green shields. Maybe that's the portrait of the villa owner who contributed to the building of this masterpiece. Beyond the Great Hunt Corridor, we have the rooms reserved for the family, covered with magnificent frescoes and on two sides we have the apartment reserved for the children. We know the composition of the family because on the northwestern side of the villa we have a family portrait with the villa owner wife surrounded by the son, the daughter and the maids caring for the clothes and necessities for the baby. Unfortunately at this moment we can't enjoy about this room because as you can see the works are in progress. They are there is the installation of the new walkways and the plexiglass roof will be changed with another structure made in wooden and copper ebony. The nine girls in bikini. Maybe this is the famous room, thanks to which the villa is known in all over the world. It's very strange to find nine girls in small subject with a costume very similar to the bikini nowadays world. On the top there is another mosaic in geometrical shape because this room changed function. Primarily it was used like a bedroom for the servants who worked for the villa owner in this family. 40, 50 years after the building of the villa, the room changed function and was reserved for a very important guest living here. Nine girls, we can distinguish two factions for the colors of the brass worn by the girls greens and reds. First one with bars in their hands, throwing the discus and running. While in the lower level we have the winner. She had received the victory palm and crown from that girl on the left side, almost wrapped in that golden mantle, and she's giving a thinner crown and palm, maybe the second prize to that girl holding this floral wheel, and to the right two girls playing a sort of volume. All around, recently cleaned and restored, frescoes in Pompeian style, giving us the idea of marble and a little temple in the middle with the open doors. We are in front of the basilica, one of the largest rooms inside the villa after the re-cleaning the dining room. Unfortunately, at this moment there are works on restoration, they are installing the new roof. This room was very large, 27 meters in long, 14 meters wide, and 14 meters for the height. This room is the only room of the villa not covered with mosaic, but with, with precious 40 kinds of marbles in geometrical shapes. Marbles arriving primarily from Northern Africa. This was a sort of huge reception hall where the villa owner received the very important guest was also used for commercial purposes and like a stock exchange. Very soon the old perspective covering structure of the villa 
will be replaced by a wooden structure, which will bring it to its original look. And with all the mosaic flooring fully restored, it will be a magnificent sight.